What's up, guys? Uh, Beast Coast NYC Furby back at you again with another video, and uh, you know, as always, I say as always, but this one is an, this one is a banger. I'm gonna teach you guys, you know, since you know we're still in the pandemic, you know, offline events are coming back. It's not like in a crazy way yet, you know. Like we're seeing some events, but you know, still online is a factor. You know, playing at home on your PC is a factor. So I'm gonna teach you guys like how to have the most optimal setup on your PC, to my knowledge. And you know, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be citing some people. First people, first people I'm gonna be citing are um. WYDD from uh, InputLag.Science. You, you, you guys see on the screen, it's an excellent website that explains to you everything like about in input lag and the most important components in the chain, right? So the, so the first part what we're gonna go over is the uh, controller, right? And it's gonna explain to you like, you know, how, how input lag exists in controllers, you know, how it was before. And, you know, basically I'm doing a TLDR here. Um, what, what you guys are seeing right here is a DB15 connection. Was used for arcades, super guns, and stuff like that. You know, Sega Genesis, NES, they all had this this pin out, right? Basically, since it's a uh, since it's just serial transmission, you know, it's just analog zero and one uh, on the older controllers. There's no lag, right? So all you CRT heads, like you know, I understand why you play on CRT. It's like you want to play on those serial connections, direct access, no lag, right? So um, so fast forwarding, fast forwarding to today, you know, you guys can see right here, you know, a lot of the um. A lot of the controllers now are USB controllers, right? So the TLDR of this is, is like basically there's overhead in uh, processing your inputs for the computer to uh, recognize it and stuff like that, right? What is showing here, what is showing here in the article, right, is that your controller, so for example, I play on an arcade controller. This is the uh, Panzer Fight Stick, Panzer Fight Stick 3 with a Brooks adapter inside, right? So Every controller here pulls at a different rate, right? When you're playing on a 60 hertz, when you're playing a 60 hertz game, like a fighting game, you know, you're playing on a 60 hertz monitor, the game pulls it at every 16.6 milliseconds, right? So, uh, so like, uh, depending on the controller you have, there's some additional overhead, and then the game has to recognize it, right? So, so like, uh, not all of these, not all of these are con are created equal, right? And there's definitely things you can do. You know, if you have like a laggy controller to make it better, right? Which is what I'm gonna go over below. Before I go to the next section of this, just to show you guys like about controller lag and game lag, you know, there's like there's three important things you guys should be mindful of here. You know, be careful of your polling rate. So the polling rate of your device. Some devices are slower because of bad configuration. But for example, DualShock 4 is slow on wired compared to Bluetooth just because of the polling rate, right? So and every additional sampling is bad for lag. You want to try to keep the polling of the actual button or using a fast sampling, right? Right. So like, so I'm going to advise you guys to use 1000 Hertz USB overclocks, right? I'm going to show you some examples here of some um, commonly known controllers and how they measure up, right? So, um, so there are like some more recent guides that are out for this, right? Like, you know, Brooks, the Brooks, like um, this has been done a couple of years ago, but Brooks is still at the top of most of these input lag things and, you know, I mentioned that uh, I use a Brooks, and it's extremely, it looks extremely good. Here, I'm showing you guys like one of the most common controllers, the uh, Sony DualShock 4, right? You can see the latency of the uh, controller. Minimum is 2.2 milliseconds, max is 12.0 milliseconds, right? You know, so it's like about like one frame of lag, you know? Sh shows like an input chart right there. Let's check out the Hori, uh, let's check out the Hori Fighting Commander. So we can show you an example of an overclock. It's another commonly used controller at tournaments, right? And what we're looking for in in this chart here, right, is the percentage of a uh, on time input stop. So the left chart is native, the right ch the right chart is overclock, right. So basically, you can overclock all devices to 1,000 hertz. And look at the gains you get on overclock here. Um, the uh, native polling drops from 4 ms to 1 ms. Your average number, your, your average of button presses, it goes from 2.7 stock to 1.2 with the overclock. So that's like, wow, that's like a 100% increase, right? And most importantly here, the number of on-time inputs. Stock on this controller, it's 85%. Overclock, it's a uh, 94%, right? So you get like a 12% increase on, on this controller. And uh, basically what basically like what I'm trying to say is the um, all the controllers do have varying amounts of uh, latency and lag. You can see here, I'm looking at the Razor Panthera, you know? It's not exactly the same score as the Hori Fighting Commander. Before I show you guys how to overclock your controller, you know, I just want to give you like a little bit of backstory on some of these game engines. So some of these game engines have been tested. Some of these game engines have been tested for, for latency, right? 
So you, know, you, you can see right here, you know, I'm showing the um, arcade list of online. So you can see on average, a lot of these older titles, at least the ones he tested, um, this Super Turbo, Street Fighter Alpha 3, Garou Mark of the Wolves, and Third Strike, they're all like about 2.6 frames of uh, input latency, right? When you go to the console, when you go to the console section, you know, that's when it really starts to variate, you know? Um, it seems to be like a, a lot of the anime titles have pretty good lag, you know, Undernight in Birth and Blast Blue, they have 2.6 to 2.7, which is in par with like um, arcade titles of the day. Ghost of Gear Rev 2, so it, it starts to deviate a bit, it goes up 1 frame, 3.6. Ultra Street Fighter 4, which is considered a very responsive game, goes to 3.6, 3.7. Street Fighter 3 Third Strike on the 30th emulator, that goes from 3.7 to uh, 2.7 3 for PS4 versus 2.6 on, on PS3. So there's at least like a one frame difference. So like some people like definitely notice that. Even with Super Turbo, um, the input lag doubles from um arcade version. 4.2 to like 2.6 to 4.2, hyper fighting 4.3. Yeah, so, so you can see like as we're going down here, there's a trend of um a lot of the games being twice as lag twice as laggy as the um, CRT old school arcade games back in the day. Right? But thankfully thankfully guys, there's some things you can do about it. Your boy's got. I am going to uh, show you guys how to change your polling rate. So check this out over here. Like we'll have links in the description for you guys. Um, one of the things that you guys can use. So you can use like um, you can use like a program to change your polling rate in Windows 10. You know, like we're all playing fighting games on Windows, right? You know, so you can download any mouse or, or one that just Google USB 1000 Hertz overclock. There'll be tons of programs that come up that uh, can actually change the uh, polling rate. Now, like what people don't know is, is that, you know, this was done on uh, a lot of uh, PC games back in the day. So mice and so this is geared towards mouse and keyboard. But you can actually use it for controllers because controllers use the same USB protocol. So I'm gonna show you here in uh, Windows, right? So you guys see here, the program I'm using is called the USB Devices Rate Setup. And you can see here, I'm hovering over the uh, Xbox One controller, right? Now, if you want to look at the second column here, you can see the second column here, the rate is set to 1000 Hertz. The rest of these are set on default. Um, typically, when you overclock a controller to 1000 Hertz, you know, it, it, it tends to drop the lag in half, right? So you're basically saving half a frame, right? So if you're playing online, you're going to definitely want to overclock your controllers to 1000 Hertz. You can overclock it higher to like even as high as 8000 Hertz, but I don't advise doing that because the gains are marginal and as you go past um, 1,000, you know, um, it uses like a lot more CPU. To, to give you guys like an idea, perspective, um, a lot of the arcade super guns that play real arcade boards these days, they all have USB ports and the USB adapters are typically overclocked to 1,000 Hertz. Um, even Mr. FPGA, which is one of the most popular um, projects in retro right now, um, their USB um, ports also overclock to 1,000 Hertz, you know, so this is kind of like a standard accepted at this point. But uh, fighting game community is kind of late to it. Anyway, you download um, a mouse polling program. You overclock your controller to 1000 hertz. That's the first thing that you can do to uh, drop lag on, on the controller. The second thing you can do is... I'm going to show you guys my uh, NVIDIA control panel. Your monitor really matters, right? Your monitor really matters, guys. Whenever you use, uh, whenever you use these monitors, you know, depending on the refresh rate, you know, you, you can really drop the perceived input lag. As you guys can see right here, I am on a uh, 480 hertz monitor, right? So like, so it's definitely helping to drop the perceived lag. It's not that the uh, it's not that the games run smoother per se, but um, basically the logic behind it is this: 60 hertz games, you know, 60 FPS or 60 hertz games, they update every 16.66 milliseconds, you know, for each frame, right? When you go to 120 to 144 hertz. It drops it to eight, 240 hertz to four, you know, so forth and so on, right? But uh, apparently humans can perceive as little as uh, five milliseconds lag, confirmed by uh, blurbusters.com. So that's why for me personally, I feel the difference between 144 and uh, 480 hertz. Unfortunately, you, you cannot buy this model today. This is a, uh, a DIY hack. I'm playing on the ZZWorks X28 monitor. Um, it's basically a uh, dual display port monitor, you know, display port 1.2, so it's only for PC. Uh, and, you know, combining those two dual display port 1.2 ports, you know, I have no bandwidth for 480 hertz. 
The highest monitors you can buy today are typically like a 360 to 390 hertz. So just keep that in mind. 144 hertz, you know, is pretty achievable today. The cost of it compared to 60 hertz is pretty much neutral, you know, so it's not like a lot of money. So if you want like some of the best games, as far as your monitor goes, um, definitely look into at the very least 144 hertz monitor to uh, drop your lag. That's another thing you can do. You know, there's plenty of um, lovely monitors out there you guys can pick from. You know, you can probably check out artteams.com. And, you know, of course, shout out to our monitor sponsor at Eris. You know, we also have some sick monitors as well. Make sure you check them out. I'm going to go through some of these uh, 3D settings here. Um, once again, I am in the uh, NVIDIA control panel. And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to show you some settings that I use to help my latency personally. So all you got to do is go over to the Manage 3D Settings tab, you know, go over to the global setting, you know, take a look at it. Um, basically, the uh, the main things I'm looking for are um, anything to drop latency. So obviously, low latency mode is one thing, you know. I have it set to uh, Ultra, right? But... um. You can set it to off. You can set it to off and on. I set it to ultra because I want like the fastest possible scan out. You know, I don't give a crap like about how it looks. Second thing you can do. Second thing you can do is ge generally you want to have VSync turned off. Um, so consoles, um, consoles in general, they don't have VSync off. And um, basically, what VSync is, you know, it keeps it smooth. But like when you're watching the image, so if you have VSync off, the frame comes as fast as your monitor can can actually show it to you. Whereas with VSync on, you know, it draws it at the last possible second of, of the uh, frame. So if you do turn VSync off and you're playing on a 60 hertz monitor, you, you might see some screen tearing, even though like it's processing really fast and the input latency is really, really low, right? But uh, once you go to higher refresh, it's like you don't really see the tears anymore. So typically, typically I play with uh, VSync off, low latency mode set to ultra. And I do uh, 1,000 hertz, uh, and I do 1,000 hertz USB polling. Depending on the uh, depending on the monitor and uh, controller and computer that you're using, you you can definitely um, have an advantage of a couple of frames in a uh, net play, and you know it really helps, guys. You know, there's so many variables. You know, when it comes to net play, it's like you know you don't know the connection of your opponent, you don't know like what computer they're using, etc. You know, it's kind of like the wild west out here, guys. So hopefully those three things that I uh, told you really help to uh, drop the input lag. Another thing that I wanted to mention here that um, I can't show you because I'm not playing on a G-Sync monitor is, is like a, t typically like a lot of these monitors um, have G-Sync and a FreeSync enabled, right? You should definitely have those turned on. You know, um, it definitely does a great job at uh, dropping the uh, input lag, you know, while still looking pretty smooth, right? Um, the only reason I don't have G-Sync is because, like I said, my monitor is a hack, right? So, it came out like four years ago or something like that, and like a, it's not like a, it's not a G-Sync or FreeSync enabled monitor. Um, and it's also important to remember that there's budget options. You don't like G-Sync is expensive. And it does work. The AMD FreeSync version works just as good, you know, without the licensing, right? So, make sure you guys look into that. So, you know, just to recap, you know, once again before I exit this video. So the three things you guys all need to do: 1,000 hertz USB polling. Make sure you do them. On, make sure you do them on all your controllers and controller specifics. You got to make sure that you do it. High refresh monitor. Um, try to go as high as you possibly can. Right? You know, but 144 hertz if you're on a budget will like have like a 50% lag reduction typically. You know, across the games. Vsync, Vsync off. You know, you, you want the image spinning as fast as the monitor can show. Um, the last thing I want to show you guys is is, um, is a way to do this for tournaments because you know everything I said, it's it's all good when you're doing it when you're doing it at home, right? But if we're trying to do a tournament, like let's say you want to do like an offline exhibition, how am I going to be able to accomplish this? Like let's say I have the monitors and everything, and I have the computers, how am I going to be able to scale up the uh, 1,000 hertz USB polling so everybody can have the lowest latency possible, right? This is where Brooks once again comes to save today. So what I'm showing you guys is a uh, Brooks Wingman XB adapter. You know, it's from uh, BrookAccessory.com. You know, shout out to them. Here is the device, right? And basically, what it does is it, it's targeted towards um, Xbox users for them to use controllers on, on uh, Xbox from multiple systems. So you basically use a PS3, PS4, PS5, Xbox Elite One and Two, Switch Pro, all on, on an Xbox One, Xbox 360, and Xbox Series X. But it also has a section for PC direct input, right? Which is really important, right? So basically, like this adapter, 
it makes every controller into an X input controller on PC, which basically means you plug it in on PC, it thinks it's an Xbox 360 controller, right? So this is really good for for like a lot of um, offline tournaments, mainly because like uh, some of these controllers, some of these games don't have good PS4, PS3 controller support, and like hot swapping is an issue depending on game. This device solves a lot of the problems because you can overclock the adapter itself to uh, 1000 hertz, and you never have to worry about hot swapping again, right? So sometimes, like I said, when you unplug your controller, sometimes the controller configuration gets messed up when somebody comes in. You have these in, you overclock these, and you leave them in, no worries. People can just unplug and replug controllers, no switching of ports, no nothing. You just can't unplug the adapter itself, right? And uh, obviously with these adapters, you can't pause, right? And if somebody unplugs it, it's not gonna pause the game because it still thinks that this, it still thinks that this is plugged in, so it's gonna be acting as a controller. But uh, anyway, like if you do want like, an option for tournaments to actually run it at scale, I highly recommend this adapter. There are also like some other free options. Like I think Dantarion has like a D input program that he is working on that um, has controller support for this. But um, right now, like with the Brooks and what I've been using, this device is extremely good. I, I would recommend it for tournaments. I hope you guys learned a lot in this video about how to like drop your input lag. Well, like I said, once again, your PCB and controller matter, your monitor matters, and like and like your NVIDIA settings matter or your AMD settings matter, right? Let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Hope this helped you out. Like if you guys need if you guys need any advice, make sure to make sure to like, comment, and subscribe on this video. Follow Beast Coast. Hit me up at NYC Furby if you have any questions. That's all, guys. Until next time. Peace.